Hey folks, how's it going? So today we're going to be looking into Blip2. Uh, I think Blip2 was quite an uh, amazing engineering uh, from the folks at Salesforce. There was quite an extensive amount of um, engineering that went into Blip2. So I thought it would be a good idea for us to kind of like cover this uh, so that we can actually learn more about uh, VLE models. Um, so yeah, as usual, we're going to cover the source code as well as we're going to cover the paper. The source code is quite a little bit dense, so we're going to have to cover this probably in portions. So I'll have to create part two so that we can cover the rest of the bit that we could have been left out in this video. So the folks at Salesforce got the inspiration from the fact that pre-training VLE models can be quite expensive, especially if you have to now take into consideration the image encoders as well as the last language model, which is going to be the generative portion. So now they thought, how about we just reuse already existing uh, pre-trained image models as well as large language models. So the only thing that we need to focus on is closing the, um, the, the gap between these modalities. And that's when they introduced what they call the current transformer, which, was, which we're gonna get into in the shot. So based on the evaluations that they did, the model seems to actually perform very well. I think it performs better than Flamingo 80 billion model by 8.7, as well as it has 54 times fewer trainable parameters. So also I looked into Hugging Face uh, benchmarks. Blip2 is one of the leading multi-model models. Uh, so it's quite very impressive. Now to connect these um, frozen models, uh, so what they did was that they had what they call two-stage step, right? So the first step was the vision and language representative learning. And the second step was the vision to language generative uh, learning. So the first step, which is the vision language representative learning, the idea here was to force this query transformer to learn visual representation that are most relevant to the text, right? Then in the second stage, which is this vision to language generative learning, was that they wanted to connect the Qformer to the frozen uh, last language model um, so that they can train this Qformer to output visual representation that can be uh, interpreted by this LLM. So that's what they did. So the Qformer, on the other hand, what it is, it is nothing, but uh, it is a lightweight transformer that is composed of these learnable uh, query vectors. So these learnable query vectors, their purpose is nothing but to essentially extract features from this image encoder. So um, you can think of this more like an information bottleneck between the frozen uh, image encoder as well as the frozen um, large language model. This is to ensure that we can be able to extract the most useful uh, visual features from the image encoder. So um, you can imagine that if you're about to take the final representation from the VLE model, the, the dimension is probably higher. Whereas with this queries, uh, it's gonna be there are 32 queries by, uh, what is it, 768. So it's gonna be much less. Hence, I'm saying that uh, it's, it's important to think of this as a bottleneck because we're gonna extract the most important features, uh, visual features that we can feed to the LLM from this image encoder. So now let's try to dissect this Qformer, um, which is gonna be the bottleneck to extract the most important features. So the key thing is that I wanna know how are these land queries, how are they able to then extract the most important visual information from this frozen uh, image encoder. So what the folks done is that they introduce um, the two transformer sub-modules, the first one being the image transformer, the second one being the text transformer. So the purpose of the image transformer here is that it has to interact with this uh, frozen image encoder. This is purely for feature extraction. That's why we have this cross attention right here, right? Then the second transformer is gonna be more like a text encoder as well as text decoder. So we're going to talk about these objectives uh, in a little bit, right? But the punchline here is that you want these land transfer uh, land queries to be much more informed about text, right? So you choose them to extract the important features based on this text. 
So you're gonna have to train this first stage, right? So don't forget that these two stages. So the second stage is whereby you're gonna have to train the the entire thing, uh, like given the the visual or uh, the query, right? The this is gonna be denoted as Z, given the queries to the to the last language model. Then you're gonna have to generate like the text or something like that. But this is the first stage. So the first stage now is that can we get these len queries? Uh, to extract the most important visual information from this image encoder. So we're going to do that uh, with this uh, two sub module transformer. Uh, uh, the, the second one being the, the input text. So you will see how we're using this attention mask to achieve that. Um, but yeah, like I said, the punchline is that if we have like a text here, a kid wearing sunglasses, you're forcing this uh, lens credits to extract that a kid wearing sunglasses. So the idea is that the Z, which is going to be the output, will um, will be will be having those representation that you want. And this is going to be uh, much more efficient because of the Z is going to be 32, which is 32 queries. And these queries um, have like 768 dimension. So this is much more, this is much better than actually taking the um, the, the 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 visual representative final visual representation from a VLE model, I think the the representation can like can be quite huge. I think it's one thousand twenty four or something like that. But yeah, that's how we we that's like the high level architecture of this. So now we're gonna have to look into the objectives. So uh, within this Qforma, so these objectives are really at the core of the Qforma because they're the ones that enable these uh, land queries to extract the important visual features that will be um, provided within the large language model. So uh, the first objective that we're going to have to look into is this uh, image to text matching. So essentially, you can think of this as nothing but uh, we're trying to establish some sort of like a correlation between the image and the text representation. So what you still remember within the Qforma, we said that we have these two sub modules uh, the first one being the image transformer and the second one being the text encoder. So the output within this image encoder, we said that this is just Z, right? So this is just denoting those 32 queries. So we're going to take these 32 queries and we're going to pass them within a linear. I think this is going to be a two-stage linear classifier. So the goal here is, is nothing but to predict whether an image text pair is positive or negative, right? So you can think of like when we pass the Z, we're gonna obtain the logit. Then what we do is that we're gonna we're gonna try to compute the matching score by obtaining the average uh, of these logits for all the critters, right? But now the, your question that you might be having is that then how do we get this text within this Z representation? So this is where that self attention comes in because you still remember we said that. These sub modules within Qforma they share the self attention, so that means that we're gonna have to introduce the bi directional self attention mask. So this will enable that these queries that we initialize and the text that we have to attend to each other here. So you can think here they will attend to each other. So we're forcing these, uh, these, um, what's this, the queries to really have an understanding of this text. And uh, by doing that, that's why here we can actually be able to predict if like the text and uh, image uh, are positive or negative. The second objective we're going to look into is this image grounded uh, text generation. This is quite an interesting objective because now we are forcing this text um, encoder to generate text. Actually, I keep on saying text encoder, but um, text decoder. So it can be an encoder, it can be decoder, it depends on the objective. Here it was an encoder because of that bidirectional um, self-attention mask. But anyway, here we have the text decoder, so we want this to generate text, but it has to generate text based on this, um, on, the, on the visual features. Remember that this image uh, transformer is the one that is actually communicating with that frozen image encoder that we spoke about, right? So then there is no like communication, direct communication between the, um, the image encoder as well as the text decoder. So 
we have to rely on this image transformer here, the, the first submodule. So which means that we're going to have to get those queries, those 32 queries, to really extract the features, right? Because these features will have to be used by this, um, this self-attention here, which is going to generate text, right? This is like the objective. But the punchline here is that um, we go into then have uh, what do we call the multimodal, uh, multimodal uh, casual self-attention mask, right? So the idea here is that the, these queries can attend to each other, right? But uh, the text here can attend to the previous text as well as the previous or as well as these um, these uh, queries. Right, so you, you you continue to generate. So it's an it's an auto regressive thing. But like I said, the most important thing is that because of now we're forcing these queries. Yes, we're forcing these queries to really generate this text that we're trying to generate here. So this means that these queries will be forced to really really will be forced to extract the important features from the images. So. I think that's quite important thing. So now looking into the final um, objective, this one is gonna be the image text constructive uh, learning. So the idea here is nothing, but we're trying to maximize the mutual information uh, between the image and the text representation. So we said that, okay, cool. We have this image transformer. We have this text encoder. So this image uh, transformer is gonna output Z and this um, text transformer is going to output T. So this T is nothing, but it's going to be the CLS. So because of Z, it has 32 queries. So what we're going to do is that we're going to multiply uh, each query against this T. Then we're going to take like the maximum highest similarity. Then yeah, that's, that's, that's the one that we're going to take. But the punchline is that uh, on the mask side, is that uh, you're gonna have to then create what we call a unimodal self-attention mask. So the idea that is you don't want these queries to really see what it, what is inside the text, and you don't want the text to really see what's inside the queries. So these are supposed to be independent. So that's why that's how you force this. Uh, you you wanna force these queries to really uh, extract the most important features because at the end of the day you're trying to maximize the similarity between the text right that's the objective that's why that's how the training will go right um so yeah so i think this is quite a powerful uh objective so yeah uh let's get to see now what's the next step but remember that all of the things that we explained now these were like first stage right so there's a second stage whereby now that we have these queries that we spoke about that we generated how do we then get them within the last language model so that we can actually be able to generate the text right so that's the second stage that we need to get to now coming to uh stage two so stage two is nothing but you can think of it as like uh end-to-end -end, uh pre-training of the vle model so you just bring uh together all these components uh like the image encoder the last language model decoder which is solely responsible for generating text then we have this Q former here that we trained in the first stage. So we know that this Q former does something very well, which is that it's just gonna give us these queries. And now these queries are what we call language informative visual representation. And um, by that, I mean like, because of the Q former plays a role of being a bottleneck. So it's just gonna make sure that it extract all the important visual information and it's gonna filter out irrelevant visual data that uh, the last language model won't find to be useful. So the punchline uh, on this end-to-end -end is that we have this fully connected uh, layer. So this is going to be used to project the, um, the query embedding. So this is going to be Z, which is those 32 queries. So we need to project them uh, to match the dimension of the text uh, embedding of this last language model. So I don't know if you guys watched my video on adapters. So we spoke about something called prefixes and soft prompts. So you can think of these um, these these queries here are going to be like prefix or soft visual prompt, as they call them in this paper. So yeah, 
Um, I, th I think on Blip, you can also add text. So which means that maybe you can like pass the image as well as pass the text. Maybe something like, uh, tell me what is, what is inside this image. Then the image will be here. Then the text will be here. I think that's what they did on, uh, what is it? The mini GPT-4? Uh, I read that paper a long time ago, but I think it's something along those lines. You, you could pass like the text and the image. I'll probably cover it um, as I get time. But yeah, um, when it comes to like training this end to end, what are we optimizing? Um, so because of here, obviously these stuff are frozen. So we're not, optim we're not touching the weights there. So I believe that we're going to optimize this and this. I'm not sure about the Q form. Probably they did mention it here because of I believe that the parameters here have been trained in the first uh, in the first stage. Maybe we also need to optimize them in the first stage for like end to end like text generation. Uh, so yeah, maybe we have to do that also. Uh, I might have missed that uh, uh, that uh, detail, but yeah, this that's all it. This is it to this uh then I, I like to cover like uh, i honestly like to cover some of these uh pre-training settings in the code because of uh they make sense when we cover them like in the code i think like just talking about like um the the optimizers atom optimizers the hyperparameters that they chose all of the stuff so i think it will be better if we cover these in the code and yeah just the paper will be like the, 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 the main idea. Anyway, uh, yeah, you, you can see that, yeah, like, yeah, which means that, yeah, this is the same thing that I said. So you can add the text and you can add the image, right? So which means that here, this is like a prefix, a soft, a soft uh, visual prompt. Then you have your text, then you pass them to the model. So yeah, then the, the model is gonna just output the, the text so you can see it's quite very very doing well so this is quite impressive so yeah i think uh this model is pretty good so yeah uh, i'm i'm gonna do something which is that i'm gonna separate the uh, what is it the text i'm gonna separate the code and i'm gonna separate the paper because of if you make these videos to be quite long no one like uh, watch them like so i think that will be cool uh so yeah I'll cover the code, probably, uh, don't worry about it. By the time you probably watch this, the code will be out uh, as part two. Uh, so yeah, thanks guys. Uh, I'm just gonna uh, release the, the code now for this, like the video covering the source code in much more detail. So.